Hey customizers, welcome to the next adventure of Talking Hands Customs to all my subscribers. Thank you very much. And if you're joining us for the first time, where have you been? Where have you been? Anyway, uh, welcome to the channel. So in this episode, there's been lots of going on, as you can tell by my red stained uh, spray booth filter here. And for this adventure, we are going to improve upon a previous Hasbro design. Uh, several videos ago, um, we talked about one of the things about customizing, one of the aspects of it, is that you can actually fix what we would perceive to be some of Hasbro's mistakes or poor design choices, uh, call it what you will. Um, in this case, we're gonna do the septic tank. So also, before we begin, I'd like to apologize to all the people looking to fix their household plumbing and ended up here by accident, but <laughs> welcome to it. You might as well stick around because this is gonna be cool. Uh, in this case, we have a regular Hiss tank. And uh, just a quick word, I'll do a specific video of vehicle spotlight on the Hiss tank itself. But for this project, uh, I'll get this one thing out of the way. This is actually a mix of retro, uh, yeah, retro line Hiss and vintage Hiss. And the one difference that's jumped out so far is that the turret here actually has three of those retaining clips on it. So the retaining clips are right here. And there's normally just two of them, but on the retro line, the more modern Hiss, there's actually a third one, so I had to cut that off. And the reason being is that there's only, on a vintage Hiss, there are two holes, uh, two slots for those tabs, and on the retro line Hiss, there's a third tab. So it won't fit unless you make that modification. So once we put it in, uh, it fits, therefore it sits, or whatever it is for cat people, uh, and we're good to go. So in this case, um, how are we going to improve this? Well, I did my pre-visualization, and we're gonna mess with some colors and we're gonna mess with some format. So aside from a disassembled Hiss here, and uh, I'll go over it uh, in detail in the vehicle spotlight. So we're just gonna skip across uh, that for now. But as you can see, I've disassembled the Hiss and we're going with the Hasbro aesthetic here, right? So large components, all painted one color, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the other thing that we'll need to do is that the function of the septic Hiss, if you haven't seen it, it's obnoxiously God awful. Um, they put on a new canopy and they put on a new turret. And uh, what that did was the uh, original canopy, which I have right here, was a piece of clear plastic that slotted in and closed to give you a nice enclosed uh, cockpit for the tank. Um, and this definitely needs some TLC. You can see how grungy it is. And we'll get that sorted out, no problem. And then the turret uh, was a plug and play turret, but it had a water pump on it. And uh, that was the whole gimmick of Eco Warriors was having pumping water on everything, which is kind of ironic because they wanted you to be environmentally conscientious. And yet at the same time, they wanted you to waste water while you were playing. So um, nothing's perfect, I guess. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the original turret, but I'm gonna make a small modification to it. And then we're gonna add another piece onto the back of the hull. And I'm still working on the final design for that, but I'm gonna give you a general idea of what it's gonna be. And when you're doing stuff like this, we've talked about scratch building before where you take some basic shapes to recreate uh, or to create um, or recreate actually uh, any missing parts or adding on new parts. So in this case, what I wanted to do was by keeping the original turret, I wanted it to look like this was a variant hiss like it should be, except what they did was they basically took away the power of it to shoot lasers and those same barrels will actually discharge their sloppy goo or sludge or acid, whatever the heck it is. Um, so what I wanted to do is make almost like a little uh, pack on the back of the Hiss tank. And I found some objects here. Um, these are, you know, roughly G.I. Joe scaled oil drums. And this was a little uh, carry case for, I don't know, something. I got to sand all this stuff off anyway. So what I figured was keeping it simple was that I would somehow fix these to each other like so. And then I would attach to the back of the Hiss tank. And what I would do is uh, I even played with the idea of putting the tanks on vertically like this because uh, it kind of gives a little bit of a, a nice change. Most of the lines on the Hiss, as you can see, are quite angular. So doing a vertical, almost like uh, if it was an antenna in that orientation, have that just sit on the back deck because um, I wanted to modify it as little as possible and potentially maintain it that if I ever changed my mind in the future and said, oh my God, that thing is still ugly, that I could take it apart and uh, customize it without having any loss of functionality, mostly in the case of these two foot pegs here for uh, carrying soldiers on the back. So what I'm gonna do as it stands right now is I'm actually gonna match the orientation of the back slope here. So rather than have everything sitting vertically and either drilling holes for it to clip on there, I did want it to look like it was an extra feature that clipped on, but uh, quite frankly, I'm not in the mood. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match the slope of the back armor 
uh, and that way it'll actually give it a uh, an organic feel and what I mean by that is it looks like it's supposed to be there rather than something that was just sitting there haphazardly so it'll be roughly oriented like that uh, and it'll look roughly um, like like I just showed you there with this box in the middle and two drums on either side and what I might do is either find a sticker in my uh, sticker bin to put some controls on there or I'll scratch build some knobs like you would see on uh, a lot of GI Joe uh, computer panels and stuff like that so we'll uh, we'll leave that one for a later uh, consideration because we don't need to have that finished in order to start because that whole unit will be quite a separate piece from the turret and the question is now how do I make that backpack work with this turret because if I just sit the backpack on there of course you can use your imagination and say oh yeah well these ones shoot acid but we're going to push it one step further um, using hoses has been a long time G.I. Joe thing. Airtight had them and you can think of probably 10 characters that had little attach on hoses um, for realism. So what I'm actually going to do is run hoses from that backpack unit to these guns uh, to help emphasize the fact that these are now uh, pressurized cannons that shoot some sort of pollutant liquid out of them rather than just the traditional laser cannons that we all know and love. So that's what we're going to do. And now in messing with colors, uh, if you're not familiar with Eco Warriors, I don't blame you. But they use a lot of uh, bright, pastel -y, neon, fluorescent barf. I mean colors. And um, that's what we're going to recreate. Except we're going to do it maybe a little bit better. And when you're doing something like this, any sort of improvement, it needs to be uh, taken into consideration with that color scheme. And I'll show you what I mean here is with these colors right here. And these are just a, a small sampling of them. The Eco Warriors used uh, a much brighter palette. Uh, and these are some of the colors I have under consideration. So um, with the original septic tank, it was basically an, a fluorescent orange with a neon green, if you wanted to call it that. Depends on the lighting you look at it in. Um, and I have done a, a couple of other Eco Warriors vehicles, and I'll show you uh, maybe later in the video what the variations can look like on that color scheme. Uh, I found this green, which is actually one of the greens I set aside for my Dreadnox color um, for the photochromic material. But I think it might be a good color to use. And well, maybe this is the universe telling me I should because it's called Toxic Waste Green and it's a color by Fantasy Games. It's an acrylic just like uh, Vallejo and all the other paints I use. The other color I'm gonna use is also Vallejo and it's a, a game color um, from the game color line, excuse me. And it's called Lustful Purple. Um, it's a pastel -y color and this is our first concern here is that within the color palette of Eco Warriors I have seen vehicles and customs done with these two colors. The problem is is that I think you need to keep that in mind when you're picking which color will be the dominant color and how you're balancing them out because these two colors make a lot of things look very much like they're owned by the Joker and some of his henchmen. Um, which is cool but it's not what we're going for. So what I did in my pre-visualization is I messed around with some different applications of different colors. The other one uh, being is that it's a, uh, a an orange or a fluorescent orange. This is uh, Vallejo, or excuse me, Citadel's uh, Troll Slayer Orange, which I've used in the past. And what I found the trick with doing uh, fluorescent colors, especially fluorescent orange, is we'll be priming everything in white. But because fluorescent orange is such a runny color and it's a gloss, and we all know now how much of a pain in the butt gloss paints can be, um, a trick I learned when I was doing my Night Force stuff was actually paint the color orange first and then paint the fluorescent color over top. It may seem a little weird. It doesn't seem too counterintuitive to me, but you never know. Um, but what it does is it base coats the color in the color that you're going to, it's going to be, um, which I guess is what always happens when you paint stuff anyway. But, um, in this case, what it's going to do is this, this orange is going to do most of the work for you. So you prime it white, you paint it this orange, and then you put the fluorescent over top. So what the fluorescent orange is doing is actually tinting the uh, orange that's already on there. So this is like your working color, and then the fluorescent color would be your finishing color, and it'll take far less paint, because if you've ever tried it before, and if you haven't, stop. Um, if I prime this white, for example, and I decide to make this all orange, like the original tank, then if I just did fluorescent orange on top of the white primer, I would be here for days and it would be glossy and sticky. So if I wanted to make it workable, I might have to flat coat it in between each time. And I'm just building up so much paint that um, it would take forever to get the um, look I wanted. Not to mention that because it's a gloss paint and it's relatively transparent in this case, it would settle into all the 
grooves and cracks and it would be darker there and it would be much lighter everywhere else. Um, which can be an effect you may want to do if you're looking for, to do something more realistic. But in this case, we want to look like a Hasbro uh, officially released toy. We want to look for dyed plastic uh, with minimal paint look in this case. So uh, by all means, uh, I think it's a great idea to pre-paint it in its regular color first before hitting it with the neon. You can do that with the green as well. Um, I'm going to paint the hull in neon green. And uh, if I don't think that it's quite the right tone that I'm going to go over with fluorescent green or fluorescent yellow in this case. This is kind of a mid-tone between the two. It's got some yellow in it, as you can see, um, from its tint. And uh, I'll use that to my advantage and I'll leverage the base color, the working color here, to then push it over to the fluorescent side of the house. So without further ado, um, I think we've seen the priming process and the painting process enough. So I'm going to get these prime, uh, painted up. The tracks are going to stay black in this case, uh, just like the original as well. So the first thing I'm going to do in this case is because I'm not sure uh, if my color layout is going to work because uh, I want it to look as much uh, like an Eco Warriors vehicle as possible. I'm going to do a test uh, and I'm going to do the whole haul in this or most of the haul. And if I start getting a bad feeling, I'm going to stop and then I'm going to switch over to the orange. So it might take a little bit of work, but I'll show you the finished product. And if I did change my mind, then I'll explain to you exactly why I did that. So let's just hang tight and I'll be right back. Okay, so we've got the uh, guns here. And what I'm going to do is uh, taking a look at them. I want the hose to come into the sides of these guns here. And as you can see, there's a nice flat surface right there and <clears throat> let's get a pointer out here even though you can see it's got this odd shape in the back this little angle shape if we draw a vertical line there it's actually a perfect rectangle so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my ruler and draw an X uh, from corner to corner there and that center point will be where I put the drill bit in um, so let's get that done first and then we'll talk about uh, using a drill <laughs> on stuff you shouldn't be <laughs> and we'll go from there so I just got my little framing square I'll try and keep it in frame here but a straight everyone here has dr drawn a straight line before and it's kind of more important that I make sure that it's good rather than showing off how to use a ruler unless you've never used one before in which case here we are so before I draw my line I'm testing to make sure that I've taken into account the width of the marker tip. And let's just do a test here. Yeah, it rubs off too. So it's an orange marker on a black surface, but what it is is the ink is shinier than this plastic, so it'll actually draw a shiny X on it. And uh, this can be a little bit on the finicky side because you're trying to draw a straight line on a very small surface that doesn't have much of a grip. So it pays off to spend the extra time to get it right. There we go. That's pretty good. And let's draw the other side. Like that. Even bringing the marker up to the thing my hand was moving to compensate. So you can see there now a nice shiny X for the center point for drilling. And I'll just do the same on the other side here. Um, when you're doing a design where you, you've got to drill or modify anything, it's always best to take your time, think about it, plan it out, see if there's any alternatives to what you want to do or better methods. Because um, you never know, right? Maybe ask a buddy. Say, hey, I want to do this. And I'm thinking about doing it like this. Uh, do you think that's the best way to go about it? And maybe they know a tool or a method that you never even thought of. Uh, it's not a bad thing. In this case, yeah. And it's a little finicky. So when I say take into account the width of the marker, you don't want to put the ruler right... You don't want to put the marker right corner to corner because then your line will be above that point. So you can see there, my marker lines go right into each corner. Let's see if I can get the light to catch it. There we go. Go right into each corner because I move, I offset the ruler ever so slightly to take into account the width 
of the marker. Uh, this is a Sharpie pen, uh, not a paint marker or anything like that. And the X will rub off. So try not to handle it too much depending on what you're using afterwards. Uh, and the reason why I'm uh, drilling now before I paint is that depending on how well this goes, um, I don't want to tear up any of the paint. Whereas if I drill the hole now and I can smooth it out with an X-Acto knife and sanding sticks or whatever, then I paint it. It'll look much more manufactured as opposed to modified. Um, and I know that from experience because I've certainly tried this before on other projects. And I was like, oh yeah, you know what? I'll modify it and paint it. Or I'll paint it, then modify it, I should say. Uh, and by the time I got to that, it had torn up the paint and made loads of extra work. So uh, if you're not sure about a design aspect, by all means, uh, just take a pause, work through it th in your mind and say, okay, in order to get this look, then I wanna do this first and that. And the good news is with this, uh, especially with parts like this, is if I drill the hole and I change my mind and I wanna fill that hole back in, I can just put some sheet styrene, let's get this to focus, put some sheet styrene in there and then just putty up that hole and we'll be good to go. Uh, keeping in mind that the texture might be slightly different than the plastic. This actually has a, uh, a different feel to it than the vintage Hiss. So uh, more on that during the spotlight or go check out the spotlight by the time you see this video, who knows. All right, so now we've got our X there. Um, and then what I did is I went to my local hardware store uh, to the kitchen section. Uh, hardware stores may vary. And I got some thin diameter hose. Um, I imagine this is for running water line um, to the back of a kitchen, or <laughs> the back of a kitchen, to the back of a refrigerator. And uh, this is 3 16 diameter hose. And it'll tell you in black writing uh, on the hose itself. So uh, I honestly don't know what all of these arrows here are for. But uh, I used a 3 16 drill bit with this hose before and it gets me the hole I need, so, <laughs> so to speak. Um, I'm not gonna pretend, pretend to be a plumber because all my fun is spit here. So now that I've got this, I put a 3 16 drill bit in my drill. And uh, the important thing when you're using a drill, um, if you've never done this sort of thing before, is you know that when you squeeze a drill trigger that it goes very fast and most people just go right for the whole like the straight trigger pull full trigger pull right off the way uh, right off the bat so you get something like this and you can see how the drill moves um i don't have a super tight grip on it but the drill will move anyway due to torque um, and if you do that especially on a flat surface with no pilot hole or anything like that you're going to get some slippage now you can either dig a pilot hole here with your knife, but if you don't have much luck with that or you can't get a good pilot hole for the drill bit you're using, it's actually uh, a big help if you manipulate the trigger in such a way that just practice going slow so that you just get a little bit of rotation, just like this. So I'm squeezing the trigger and as you can see, the drill bit's barely moving and the key to drilling through any of this plastic at any time uh, is going slow. Will I go this slow the entire time? No. But will I do that to start my hole at the very least? Absolutely, because it will dig into the plastic. And then once you get uh, to a nice depth where you know the drill bit's gonna be stabilized, then you can squeeze a little bit more and a little bit more until you get through. But you wanna be light on the trigger, so as soon as you feel yourself get through that plastic, you instantly release the trigger, okay? So I don't know if I can get this done with this camera angle, so... Um, Give me a second, I'm gonna rejig here and show you what I mean. All right, so here we are at the drilling bench, the workbench anyway. Lots of projects on the go, as always. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our guns to get drilled. And all I'm gonna do is keep a firm grip on the gun like this. Thankfully, the sides are flat. So if I put some finger pressure on it like that, we'll be good to go. Uh, anytime you're working with tools, it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it. Be careful, go slow, um, and we'll go from there. I'm just going to rejig my light here so I can see my X a little bit better. There we go. And then the thing with this is that you want to make sure that you're as vertical as possible. So more time is spent setting up than actually drilling. Um, and it takes some getting used to, but you want to find the tip of the bit and place it on that X as best you can. And I find that I pull up on the drill like this uh, to keep it very light. So I'm actually 
modifying pr pressure with my thumb to make sure that it's good to go. And I'm looking at it from all angles to make sure that it's seated. And then I'm just going to gently, ever so gently, start squeezing the trigger. There's our slow movement there. A little bit more. And we're through. Uh, you can see there the gun twisted a bit because there is torque behind it. So you are keeping a good amount of pressure on the cannons themselves. I'll show you the hole there. Okay, right in the middle of our X. Um, so now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And just set it up. This is the quiet part because I'm concentrating. And sometimes what you can do, if you don't like where the bit is, I just rotate it a bit. Sometimes with two hands, get that fine trigger control. There we go. So I just rotated the drill bit, which makes it easier for orientation. And with the shadows here, it's playing a little bit of a game with me. Looks like we're okay. Remember, it's always better to measure twice and cuss once. <laughs> and a little bit of pressure on the trigger. And this is a way you can check rotation too. And by that I mean that the drill bit from all aspects by spinning this slowly is where you want it to be. I'll just go nice and slow here. It's biting in. I can feel it putting pressure on the cannon. And we're through. That's all there is to it. So you can see I've got two nice holes. So now all I'm going to do is clean those up with an X-Acto knife. Just get rid of some of the plastic. Sometimes it'll raise a little bit of the material as you can see there. And I'll just skim that off with an X-Acto and we'll be good to go to carry on. Let's get back to the spray booth. Okay, so we've got our holes there. I've cleaned them up with an X-Acto knife pretty well. Um, we'll just get in there with the knife again and just go around at an angle. Uh, you can go sideways across the hole too if you want. Uh, and this is why we do it before we paint. You wouldn't want to catch the paint and start lifting it or, or cause any damage to any work you've done. Because then you just have to go back and do it all over again. Maybe if you scratch down to the plastic, you'd have to prime and then color again and blah, blah, blah. So now I've got my hose here. And now we're just going to do a test fit. So it should be a nice snug fit. Okay, there we go. And as I push the hose in, you can see it's penetrated through the hole. And you can push it in as far as you want um, for security. I wouldn't just do it flush like that because it might pop out. In this case, because it's a small cavity, it doesn't hurt just to push it right up against the uh, opposite wall like I did right here. Uh, and there you go. So now all you have to do is do that to the exact opposite piece, which I've already gone ahead and done. So in this case, um, I've started building my toxic waste pack here. Um, it's a work in progress, and I'm not sure this will be the final design. I have a few of these bits. Uh, the frustrating part, uh, while you might think it's convenient for me to have G.I. Joe scaled barrels, is that these ribs here um, actually prevent you from doing a lot of uh, simpler and easier things. And... Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to fill the gaps to make it look like one molded piece and we'll see how that turns out. But uh, there's lengths of tubing you can get at uh, hardware stores in the plumbing section that would do this just as nicely uh, and certainly facilitate creating more of a, um, a larger construct, if you will, because now I've got to figure out ways to try and make this work. And at the end of the day, during this project, you know, if you don't like what's going on, then, then get rid of it and, and start again. It doesn't hurt. Uh, in this case, I'm going to keep pushing my luck and see what happens next just because I like to live dangerously. But uh, overall, uh, progress is going along as I think it should. Um, and we'll see what goes on. There's a little bit of lopsidedness to this. And I threw some fluorescent orange paint on there um, just to see what it was going to look like. 
as a constructed unit. Sometimes uh, we've mentioned before in previous videos that when you're using different materials to create something, it helps to hit them with some primer or the base color, whatever you want, just to get them all unified in one color so your eye can look past the differences in color to see the overall shape of it itself. And I already drilled holes in here too, so we're just gonna shove the hose in and see if we like what we got. So I think that works just fine. The hose won't stay this long. I've got two foot long lengths of hose, but it's just to see if the overall mechanics work. So the intent is to have this hose go from the back of the tank out to the side of the cannons. And again, like I said, it's not gonna be this long, so it won't look so sloppy. Um, and then we're gonna go from there. So that's the next phase of this uh, project complete. So now I've gotta get these painted up. Um, if you're curious as to what fluorescent orange paint I'm using, you can see the Vallejo here. Uh, we talked about colors in the beginning of the project there, but um, I'm not actually that much of a fan of it. I don't like the way that you thin it for airbrushing. Um, and it's a gloss, so it's a real pain in the butt to use. Um, and what I do like is uh, this. Um, it's by Krylon there, you can see the thing. It's just fluorescent paint, it says special purpose on the top. Um, I use it outside for ventilation purposes. And it's red-orange fluorescent. And uh, this stuff is golden. I've used it on multiple projects like Night Force and my other um, Project, any project that requires fluorescent orange, this is my go-to because it's got excellent coverage and it dries very quickly. So this was just a quick coat to get it on there. Once I get uh, the rest of it worked on or whatever construct I end up going with, I will absolutely be using this product. So uh, more, more on that in a bit. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I've got to decide whether or not I'm gonna keep this uh, construct. Now, what I wanna do is I'm gonna maybe make a little shim in there, it's a little lopsided, because uh, I wanna fill in some of these gaps and I wanna do that in a way that presents itself as one molded piece. Plus I have to address this in the middle here. I could leave it, um, there's nothing really wrong with it. I'm trying to see if I want to uh, push my luck and maybe cover that gap with something, whether it's more of this Gorilla Glue, which I've used um, and smoothed out to give it that molded plastic look. I'm not too, too sure yet. But uh, that's just the name of the game, right? So I'm going to uh, try out some shims and stuff. I'll do this off camera and then uh, I'll show you the end result and whether or not I'm going to keep this piece or not. So just hang tight. Okay, and uh, here we go with the uh, oil drum pack for the back of the toxin drums, whatever you want to call it. Um, with the shims in, it certainly eliminated those seams. I tried a couple of things here, which turned out not too bad. There's some flaws there that might be caught on camera. But um, overall, I'm happy with the design. What I would say though, is that in my trying to incorporate these oil drum shapes into the design, I actually would have been far better using just, or far better off, excuse me, uh, using just regular plumber's tubing and then adding my details after. So that way I could put them where I wanted them and they wouldn't inhibit anything else. There was a lot of puttying and sanding and filling to make this. Um, and quite frankly, it fought me through the whole process. So this is a, while the pattern is okay, I would never use these oil drums again like this. Um, I'm, I'm reasonably confident in saying that, of course, now that I've said that and recorded it on YouTube, I'm probably gonna do it again with the oil drums and just drive myself even more over the cliff of insanity. But anyways, it doesn't matter. So um, I wanted to show you a fluorescent orange or a regular orange part before I overcoated it with the fluorescent like we talked about. Um, the Vallejo fluorescent orange I tried in my airbrush and it was not behaving so I went back with the spray can like I showed you at the beginning of the episode. Um, but the weather lightened up here enough that I ran outside and got everything done in one shot. So this was the original orange and this is the fluorescent orange sprayed over top. I've used the spray can over a white base and it works just the same. But in this case if something doesn't quite work out at least you have a regular orange underneath and it maybe adds some dimension to your part. But uh, there it is. So um, everything else has been clear coated as well. And I want to show you the hoses here because you know, a couple of people have asked about painting flexible parts. So that's got uh, acrylic, the enamel based spray can on it. It's got a clear coat and we're, we're looking just fine. Even if I impart a little bit of a bandana twist into it, nothing's cracking, nothing's flaking. So we're good to go for assembly. And of course we've got our drilled out guns there. So now you can see where it pays dividends. Any shrapnel you see in there is just on the inside of the hole. The outside is smooth. So by drilling the hole first and then painting it, you're saving yourself a lot of trouble and there's no damage, there's no damaged paint on this part. Uh, and well, we haven't just been making orange bits for this, have we? We've been working on the tank itself. So let's show you that because you haven't seen it. So there's the tank itself. Uh, we started off with the 
um, toxic green, toxic waste green, which I thought was rather apropos. But it's a little bit of an apple green. So it's a, it's a green yellow and it wasn't quite pushing it over the edge to neon. So what I did is I hit it with neon yellow over top. So the color coded well. And then when I hit it over top with the fluorescent, which was a gloss and a paint in the butte airbrush, um, it tinted it and pushed this color into the fluorescent or neon realm. So uh, we're good to go there. The spray can I showed you uh, with the fluorescent orange also comes in a fluorescent green and a yellow and all that sort of stuff. And I'm going to keep messing with other airbrushable fluorescent paints to see if I can find the best one. And when I do, I'll definitely do an episode and show you lovely people all about it. But in the meantime, so there's the uh, tank itself. And now that these parts are dry, let's do a mock-up here like we like to do. And I still like the turret black. I was debating on painting this orange, but um, I kind of like that it brings the black up, up top a bit and almost frames the neon colors. And then we'll lean up the orange tanks there. And then if we sit in a hose there, you can see there I didn't paint the end. And what I might recommend is that you don't paint the tips, cover them with tape. Because uh, now I'm going to push my luck and see what happens when I try to insert the hose. But um, I might scrape it off too before I do that because I don't want to uh, create any uh, wrinkling in the paint being pushed up. So um, now you can just, if we just sit the hose there like that, you get a rough idea of what it looks like color wise. Um, that is fluorescent and that is obnoxious and I love it. And there's the, the double tank set up on the back there. I'm going to lightly tack that in place probably, just one or two uh, little pecks of um, Gorilla Glue and sit it on there and that way I can pry it off if I ever want to go back and change it. I'm not going to glue the hoses into the tank because I want those into the guns or the tanks because I want those removable as well. But uh, here's our toxic his tank and I've got to give it a name too. The septic tank is kind of funny. I call it, I thought about calling it the septic tank too, but I'm kind of rolling around the idea of Toxo tank which I think sounds kind of cool. Yeah, there's a Toxo Viper, so Toxo Tank would be kind of jammy. Other than that, I'm racking my brain for synonyms for, you know, names of pollutants and stuff like that. I'm certainly not going to call it CFCs because that episode was horrible. Horrible. Um, but, but uh, yeah, so let's carry on and uh, see what we get here. And here we are with the finished product. Let's go over the original concept was to take the ugly septic tank and see if we could make it look cooler. In this case, I wanted to bring it back to an original hiss with maybe some add-on parts that Hasbro would have added uh, and trying to stay with that Hasbro aesthetic of having large parts all in the same color. We started off by creating a tank, if you will, for the whatever pollutant they're shooting out of their cannons. Um, and I'm about let's call it 90, 95% happy with it. There was some misalignment and stuff like that. Um, and I used two uh, ready-made oil drums. Uh, and as I said at the beginning of the episode, you could absolutely make these, and it probably might've actually worked out better if I had used just um, plastic tubing with some styrene discs cut out for the top and bottom. And then I could have added the strapping again with styrene if I wanted to. But in this case, I wanted to try it out and see what happened. So, I always try and do a warts and all approach, and I would say that that mostly worked. If I did it again, I would probably be a lot more careful with it, but I made it work, uh, and overall I'm happy with it. So I had some custom stickers on a large sheet um, that really wouldn't fit anywhere else but on Eco Warriors because they were someone's version of what you would find on a Cobra diorama or a Cobra vehicle, but here they actually work perfectly. So we have two hazardous uh, stickers here with a couple of caution stickers on the back. Um, and then just bringing it back here for a sec. We then ran clear hose from here, uh, drilled in the holes in the top. And remember how we said drill the holes first, clean them out, and then put the uh, piping in and then paint it and all that jazz. So you can see we have nice clean connections there. So it doesn't look um, raggedy, let's say. Because uh, sometimes what can happen is the paint can lift and stuff and it just becomes messy. So it's always better to do any modifications first and then paint afterwards, even if you're working in sub-assemblies like I did for this project here. So I ran two hoses here and as you can see, uh, the measuring paid off because they actually look rather symmetrical. Um, and that was ensuring that in case there was one hose was slightly longer than the other, that they got fed into uh, the respective parts uh, an equal distance or seemingly equal distance so that way it would uh, look cohesive because it would throw it off if one hose was way longer than the other etc etc 
and the way I bent them in uh, with the design choices made to go on the side of the gun actually leaves the, the top of the turret free and clear to put an action figure in. Um, the turret itself is stayed uh, the original black because I wanted to keep the, the tracks black and bring that and leave that bring that color up to the turret. Um, so there was just more to it. It didn't look like, oh, we're just deciding not to paint the tracks. Uh, then the guns themselves uh, were also sprayed orange. Same thing here in that the connection uh, was measured first. So we drew that X to make sure that our hole was going to go in the center of the rectangle that we identified on the side of the cannon here. And then it painted it and then inserted the hose and we were good to go. Um, the hose ends actually had no paint on them. I scraped off the other end uh, just to make sure that there was no uh, paint that would kind of shrivel up and then uh, be almost like baggy, if you will, um, around the, uh, the connection point. Uh, moving to the side of the tank here, uh, we've got our Toxic Cobra stickers. And remember that the uh, biohazard symbol is actually, it's yellow on the sticker sheet, but it's transparent or translucent, I should say, when you apply it. So it really stands out here because the background is uh, fluorescent green. On my fluorescent orange Acid Wolf, the symbol still looks cool, but it's more the color of the uh, hull itself, this fluorescent orange here. Then what I did is I mixed in some original His Tank stickers because I brought this design back to the original His Tank. So we have the third of the 63rd sticker there. And then again from this generic custom uh, sheet, but you can find it on multiple sheets, the, the same idea if you wanted to. Also uh, white His numbers would look good here as well. But I put Beware of Blast in line with the tips of the cannons there because it is shooting out some sort of noxious chemical or what have you. And then I dressed up the front of the turret here with just some random warning stickers. Um, originally it was blank, but it was too blank. It, it was a block of solid color that just really was rather jarring as far as design aesthetic goes. So I slapped some warning symbols on there that really don't mean anything. Uh, and then uh, for the grill here, uh, I didn't have the original uh, Hiss stickers for this one. So this is actually a grill cut from a uh, Dreadnought Swamp Fire sticker sheet, again from Toy Hacks. All these stickers come from Toy Hacks minus the custom ones. Uh, and carried that design around. So we have a nice blend, I think, here with that. I love the, the Toxic Cobra symbol, but to blend it in with some regular His Tank things, I think really brings it back to the Cobra side. And just to further carry that on down through the design, I did put the traditional uh, tow hook sticker here on the front of the tracks where it normally goes, uh, just to make it seem more like uh, a His Tank that's been modified rather than that god-awful septic tank that Hasbro produced. Uh, and there you have it. So uh, the other thing I did too, as far as display goes, is this is uh, what's called a Cobra Air Trooper. But if you look at that mask, they're supposed to be pilots, I think, or whatever. But it actually looks like a, a spray mask you would use or like a hazmat mask or something like that. So I think it really fits. And the fact that he's got the classic Cobra uh, body on him really brings, again, the display, the displayability of it back to something that seems more um, tangibly Cobra, let's say. Um, I tried tinting the canopy on this too but it didn't work out so well. So I, I stripped it with um, nail polish remover. I used a, a mix of clear yellow and green, but it just made it look too disco. So uh, I stripped that all off and the natural color of the canopy actually works very well with this and it lets you see everything inside. So I'm letting the green inside the cockpit basically uh, show through and act as the green of the canopy as well. So it actually didn't need to tint it whatsoever, but the pro tip there is using nail polish remover to remove acrylic paint from especially clear parts like that. Uh, and I guess one more thing just to show you is I'm gonna take this Toxo Viper here and let's put them in the turret there. And I think that works rather nicely. Um, I love this piece, I love it. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, I would have, if given the choice of buying the original septic tank or this one, I would have bought this one in a heartbeat. Uh, I'm very pleased with the way that turned out. So not everybody likes Eco Warriors. They get a bad rap, but I think um, I'm gonna be bold and say that these colors here, cause I swapped them basically. The original septic tank was mostly fluorescent orange with some green highlights to it. Um, so swapping the colors, this fluorescent green here works very well, uh, especially with the black track and the black in the turret. And I think we've made a more balanced uh, subject here. So it's kind of like that meme with the Joker where I like Eco Warriors and I'm tired of pretending I don't. So uh, there will be more Eco Warriors uh, subjects in the future, especially Toxic Cobra because, well, I have some stickers left. Uh, but there you have it. So um, if you followed along with this project exactly, I hope yours turned out uh, as well as or better than mine did, especially with the hiccups I had making the uh, tanks on the back here. But uh, as you can see, now we've worked with Clear Hose and brought that into our repertoire. Um, 
of tools to use as customizers and now we can use that in future projects as well and I am just tickled green that uh, this is now a part of my display so let's leave it at that um, and let's wrap this up and what I'll say is I hope all your projects are going extremely well regardless of what you're working on and uh, in the meantime be safe and have fun <laughs>